right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Loopholds Dream Season Live. Darren and I are out here today on one of the permission farms. We got two days until the Iowa gun season starts. You know, we've had some great hunts. I've had some incredible hunts. Josh has been able to tag out. Darren's been able to tag out along with a lot of the other members on the Dream Season Live team. It's been an incredible later half of November. The team has been absolutely on fire and I'm super excited about it. Hopefully tonight I can punch my tag as well. But on this week's episode, we're gonna be joining Brandon Quant in Southern Illinois. You know, he's had some incredible hunts. He's got close multiple times on some really great deer. And the hunt we're gonna be sharing today specifically is the hunt for a nine point that he got pictures of, went in there on MRI, put a stand up and self-filmed it and got the job done. It's an awesome hunt, big congrats to Brandon. But before we get into that, I wanna take a second and talk to you about this Tenzing Hang Time Day Pack. You know, Josh and I have been running this pack the entire year and I've been absolutely blown away. This is my first year using it. The durability of this pack is second to none. The zippers are great. Super easily accessible with this flip lid. That's one of my favorite things when you get in a tree and you need to grab something, you can flip this, grab it, flip it back down, and you're good to go. You got 1,600 cubic inches of storage within this bag, along with 15 organizational pockets, which is great for if you want to store a saw in there, batteries, SD cards, whatever it might be. But be sure to check out the Hang Time Tenzing Day Pack next time you're looking for a pack. This episode of BOD TV is brought to you by the new specially designed, lightweight and durable Tenzing Hang Time Day Pack. Go further, hunt longer, Tenzing. It's the 30th of June. We finally got some time after farming season's over with. I'm looking forward to driving around the block. I feel this is the first time that I've seen him since last year, but. So we're gonna go in, light this up, try to grill some beans, broadcast some chicory. Uh, you really can't get a stand of beans unless you burn the straw completely off. Get moisture, that bean will be up in three days. I right, got my bags packed. Going to last kick that bear hunt, a black bear. All right, well, as you guys have seen, it's been quite the season for Jason and I. I was able to kick it off early season in September on a beautiful black bear hunt in Alaska. After that, October 1st rolls around and Jason's getting a slam dunk pattern on this number one target deer he called Big Brow. We were able to capitalize on that on October 12th. He killed the biggest deer of his life. After that, we started into farming. Harvest started to be into full swing. There were some days that we weren't as busy where we got a little bit of rain where I was able to slip out. Had a few good opportunities at a good mature eight pointer that I didn't know at the time. Looking back, he was a good mature buck. Honestly, wish I would have maybe pulled the trigger on him. I was in there after a different buck that I called strong side. Just didn't want to make that mistake of that early making a wrong judgment call on a deer that I didn't know. But as a whole, October has been really a hit and miss. It's always seemed like I was one step behind of the deer. I would get a trail cam picture, go in there the next evening, try to hunt, and they wouldn't be there. Just one step behind it seemed like until October 28th where I did have my first encounter with Strongside. He was in there the night before. I was able to go in there the next evening. He actually showed up right at last light. All right, it's October the 28th. One year ago today, I shot a deer I called Beams. Hopefully the 28th will bring us a little luck. I'm in here after strong side again. Last night, he hit the scrape that I'm sitting over at 624. So um, he's been coming in here the last two out of three nights. Unfortunately, last night we were sitting uh, in the food plot after zombie. But tonight we're back in here after him. Also that mature eight came in a little bit before him hit this scrape. If he does come back tonight, definitely gonna try to put an arrow in him as well. We got an east northeast wind. They're coming from the northwest. It's a little bit risky, but hopefully uh, they'll slip past that and get up this pipeline and hit that scrape before that wind might swirl on us. But it should be a good night. Deercast says good. Hopefully tonight will be the night. Thank you. 
that was actually the last time that I had any pictures or encounters with that deer since. Rolling into November, uh, November 1st comes up, Jason calls me and gives me the opportunity to hunt one of his deer that he's been getting on camera quite a bit. We called stickers. Um, he's been showing up on the ground that we call the promised land. We go in that day late morning, set up a portable blind on a trailer, bring the decoys in, get it all ready to set up uh, where he had been seeing them come out from his other blind. We go back in there that afternoon, we see stickers come out at four o'clock really early. He's pushing a deer, a nice 10 pointer, 150s class 10 pointer, pushed him out of the way, went back into the woods. Uh, 30 minutes later, he comes out and sees the decoy again. And this time it's game on. He's ready to go. He's coming in perfect. Stairs back, stairs back. Here it comes, Brand. What do you think about this long window? Yeah. I'm on him. How far is that? 35. As I started to execute that shot, you can hear my release click and he quarters to me really hard again. So I have to stop my shot. As I was going forward and letting the bow down, it shot an arrow out about 15 yards and uh, spooked stickers out to about 46 yards. He had no idea what was going on. Uh, he stood there for a while trying to figure out what exactly had happened. So I don't think we scared the deer, but it was just a unfortunate miss opportunity where I should have got the job done and something crappy like that happens, but hey, that's hunting. After that encounter with stickers, I was kind of bummed out. I hadn't been getting a lot of pictures of my home bucks and nothing of strong side. So I really didn't know where I was gonna go next. I've been using my cameras for the most recent information and they weren't showing me much. You know, it was just all at night, very hit and miss spotty. Um, so I decided to start running some different cameras and I went to a spot that I hadn't checked in three and a half weeks. And wouldn't you believe it, uh, I pulled the card and one of the first pictures on there was a beautiful nine pointer, um, a definite mature deer. Um, so I knew I had to get in there that evening. He'd been in there quite a bit but I only had two cameras up at that time, so I knew there was a lot of things going on up there that I wasn't seeing. So the very first night I went up there in a saddle, took my tree sticks, set up in the stand. He came through this pinch point about an hour before dark. It was a big thicket. It was hard to get the camera on him. I got bits and pieces of him going through, but I could definitely tell it was that deer. The next day, it was 80 degrees. My buddy Jesse and I made a plan. Uh, I wanted to go into the pinch point, put up a stand, where that deer had been crossing through, I knew that was a good spot to catch them coming in and out of that thicket. So early afternoon that day, we ran in there, threw up a stand, and got out of there. Wasn't able to hunt in there that morning, but that afternoon I had the perfect wind. Deer cast said okay, it was a little bit warm, um, but I knew with all the high traffic going in and out of that pinch point to that thicket, I needed to be back in there. All right, just got set up in this new stand that I put up yesterday. Had a little complications putting this up yesterday. We came in here to set up a stand at the pinch point of this, these two woods for a morning stand really. And for this upcoming front, uh, ruts in full swing right now I believe. I think they're gonna be using this in between, back and forth between this thicket here. But uh, we're back in here this afternoon. The deer are up on their feet. It's still a little warm, deer cast says, poor. But uh, like I said, it's rut. Um, those deer are really starting to look for those does. Some of them have been pushing pretty hard, so hopefully we have a good evening. I'd really like to lay eyes on that giant again. I had him on camera on the night, so yesterday at 2 a.m. So he's definitely in the area. Hopefully we get a shot at him soon. Um, this front coming up, the next tomorrow is the 11th, I believe. And uh, deer cast says great, and it's great for like a week straight. So got a lot of good days coming up ahead of us. So. Hopefully we can get it done in here on this giant.
rush and worked up in here to 28 yards. He was slightly quarter two, but he started to make his way back towards that doe. And when he, he took a step forward, I started to execute my shot and it looked, I'm gonna have to go back and relook at the footage, but man, it looked like I put it behind the shoulder. So he ran over there and stopped and he's kind of walked really slow. So that was my last shot, my last opening before he went back towards the thicket. I thought it was a good hit, but like I said, I'm gonna have to go back and look at it, but that's a solid deer, like, <laughs> that's a solid deer, you know? Oh, man, that was insane. I drew back, I thought he was gonna take another step. He just stood there, it seemed like forever. Literally the first time I've sat in this stand. All right, well, uh, we waited all night. Uh, didn't get much sleep, woke up about three o'clock. Couldn't go back to sleep, but we're here this morning. Um, last night we did some looking on DeerCast track and uh, I put the crosshair where it needed to be. And one of the videos that popped up was Mark's deer danger and uh, my deer was a little bit more quarter two. The arrows looked like it hit almost in the same spot, pretty close to the same spot. So I think we gave him enough time. Uh, we're thinking one long liver and, and guts. So uh, we're gonna be very cautious going in here. We got a good wind. It's gonna cover up some of the crunchy leaves, I think. And uh, go in here, take it real slow and see if we can't find them. There's blood right here. So this is where he looped back around and came up through here. Blood on those leaves right there. <laughs> there he is. He's right there, piled up against that wall. Good shot, buddy. Thank you. Tanked. We're gonna we're gonna get him out of here. Well, this is not my number one target deer. He's a good mature deer. I wasn't gonna pass him up, so we're gonna get him out of here and try to do this kind of quickly. And that way we don't screw this place up any more than we already have. So. One down. One down. All right, well, it's November the 11th. We gave this deer all night. He is a deer that I got a few trail cam pictures of a few days ago. And as soon as I got pictures of him, I said if he came by, I wasn't gonna pass him up. And uh, the first night I set in this block of woods, he came by through this pinch point of two thickets. And the next day, uh, Jesse and I, we went in there and set up a stand. Um, big bedding area. Once I got up there in the tree stand, you could see forever over the top of it. Really good spot. And I sat in there the next evening and I turned around and here he came through the thicket with that doe. And uh, he parallel walked with her. I got some really good footage of him coming through, some thick stuff. Uh, it looks really cool. He ended up coming at 27 yards, uh, one of my last shooting lanes. I, I had the camera arm wrapped all the way around me. Just a slight quarter two. I put it right behind the shoulder. Uh, we used deer cast track and uh, what we think it was one long liver and, and guts and by the looks of him this morning I think he died within 30 minutes but just to be safe and they didn't hurt anything coyotes didn't get to him so very happy I'm super blessed gotta give God all the glory I'm so thankful for all the friends that helped me drag him out and and take pictures so one buck down one buck tag to go so I was so grateful to be able to get pictures of this buck go in set up a stand and then on the first evening able to harvest him was super special uh, the next day having my dad and cousin there uh, just having family there on the recovery was something that uh, I cherish very much and it's something that I won't ever forget it was only eight days after I shot my deer with a bow it was Illinois first shotgun season we decided to divide and conquer I was gonna go film for dad Jason was gonna go sell film it wasn't only 6.48 in the first morning, we got that text from Jason that said bingo.
va. Camera rolling. Mm-hmm. There's old Dit Dit and Pope and Youngless. Yeah. Hey, Jason. Yeah. Got you a buck. Dude. <laughs> Sucked out. You ever seen him, Brandon? Yep. Looks familiar. Oh, yeah. That's a code, dude. I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy. So today is the first day of the Illinois gun season, and I was fortunate enough to wrap my tag around this nice 10 point this morning. Me and Brandon had an encounter with this buck earlier on. He came out, we had a decoy out that night. This deer didn't have anything to do with the decoy, and we chased those. And, uh, this morning I was probably quarter seven, and he came across this hundred and some acre cornfield, and I had to run a couple times. The first time I just got him in frame and got him in the scope, and he, Took off again, just kind of on a fast trot. Shot him and he was carrying his front leg, piled up. I did not see him go down. So I waited till about 10 o'clock to uh, look for him. And he was laying in a ditch dead where pretty much right where I last seen him. So bucked out here in Illinois and uh, what a morning. Uh, he had shot that 10 pointer that was with Stickers on November 1st when we had that encounter with him with a decoy. Stickers ended up walking this deer off of the field. That was the last time that we had seen this 10 pointer until the morning that Jason shot him. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed those hunts. We've had a lot of fun over the last couple of weeks. Dad and I were unsuccessful this shotgun season, but we had a lot of good encounters. Um, one of the best shotgun seasons that we've ever had and not killed a deer. Really looking promising for the days ahead. He's got two tags left. I got a tag left. So hopefully with any luck, you'll be seeing one of us again soon. Uh, we hope everybody's having a great November, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this week's episode of Dream Season Live. Well, I'd like to wish a big congrats on to Brandon and Jason on those Illinois studs. The whole team has had a jam up November, including myself. I had some luck over on my Kansas lease, um, filled a tag finally on a buck we called the Bully Buck. You'll see that coming up on next week's episode of Dream Season Live. I'm hoping the whole team can carry this momentum from November into December, and I couldn't be more excited to see what happens. So, as always, we appreciate you guys tuning in to Leopold's Dream Season Live. new videos every week so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content this episode of dod tv was brought to you by leopold